I dream of a city called glory. It was so bright and so fair. And as I enter the gates, I cry holy. The angels all met me there and they carried me from mansion to mansion yeah, and all the sights that I saw but then I said I want to see Jesus For He's the one who died for all You see I bowed on my knees and cried holy I cried holy I cry holy, I clasped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son of God. And as I enter the gates of that city, me down the streets of heaven oh such scenes they were too many to tell and I saw Abraham I saw Jacob and Isaac I talked with Mark and Ivan Timothy, but then I said, I want to see Jesus, for He's the one who died for all. Yeah, I bowed on my knees and cry, holy. Thank you, Lord. I cry, holy. Glory to the Son of God. Yeah, I bowed on my knees and cry, Holy. Oh, I cry, Holy. And again, I cry, Holy. And glory to the Son of God. Yeah, I bow on my knees and cry, Holy. Thank you, Lord. I cry, Holy. And again, I cry, Holy. Glory to the 
the Son of God. I sang glory to the Son of God. I cry glory to the Son. Amen. One of these fine days. One of these days when I bow my knees in heaven, I'll be singing just as good or even better. How about you? I look forward to the day when we reach that place. But the verse that I like in that song is the verse that says, as I enter the gates of that city. Here comes the, the nice part. My, my loved ones. You see, when I get to heaven, I want my loved ones to be there with me. They are here with me today. My wife is with me. My son is with me. And when I get to heaven, I want to see my mother and my father and the church brothers and sisters my loved ones that have traveled this dusty road called hurt with me when we get to that celestial city when we pass this terrestrial city we will bow our knees and we will cry holy 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 lord god almighty Happy Sabbath, everyone. Wherever you are, in the east, in the west, even in the north, and if you are in northeast, and even if you are across the waters, there will come a day when there will be no more separation. We look forward to that day, but today God has provided a word for you. So let us get into the word today. When we speak of the church, we are often referring to a building where we meet throughout the week and gather for worship. However, this building or the building in which you meet is not the church. It is a place where the church gathers. The church is that universal body made up of every person who has trusted Jesus Christ by faith and has been born into the family of God. What we are sitting in today is not the sanctuary. I want you to know that you... You didn't hear me. You, if you have given your life, if you have committed yourself, if you have given every aspect of yourself to God, you are the sanctuary of God. The word temper used in our scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 through to 20. In verse 19, the word temper that is used refers to the place where God dwells. What the apostle Paul is trying to tell us is that we are the dwelling place of almighty God. I do not know about you. I do not know how that resonates with you, but that is a sober realization to me. We are, you are, I am, if we are committed to God, the dwelling place of God. Somehow we have the opinion that what we do has no effect on us spiritually. The truth, however, is vastly different. If you have committed yourself to Jesus, God lives in you. Therefore, 
Everywhere you go. No, you did not hear me. I said it. Everywhere you go. Everything you do. Everything that touches you in, in fact touches God. That is why Paul tells the Corinthian Christians that they are God's temple. It appears that many were using their bodies for immoral purpose that were defiling their temper. You see, my brothers and sisters, somebody today need to know that in Corinth there was the temple of Diana. Diana was the goddess of sex and love. In her temple there were over 1,000 female priestesses. In reality, they were nothing more than common prostitutes. Because to worship Diana, you had to have sexual intercourse with one of the temple prostitutes. Many in this church were used to this lifestyle. They reasoned that God had saved their souls and that their body was different. They had the mindset that said, what I do with my body has no impact on my spiritual walk. But this is as far from the truth as it gets. When God gave his plan for the tabernacle and later the temple. He set forth in no uncertain terms the plain fact that he demanded purity in the material, purity in the construction. Otherwise, he would never fill the temple with his glory. God will not fill a dirty temple. Today I want to focus for a while on this concept of Christians being the temple of God. I would like in doing so to draw some comparisons between these earthly, earthly fleshy temples and the temple that stood there in Jerusalem. I would like to preach for a while on the idea of your body is God's temple. As I bring this message, please allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. It may be that you have been letting your guard down and using your body to do things that are not right in the sight of God. If that is the case, I want you to know that there is forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Perhaps we just all need a reminder of whose we really are. Think on these things as we look at your body is God's temper. Bow your heads as I pray. Eternal God, if you can use anything, you can use me. Take my hands and my feet. Take all of me. For your glory. In your son's name I pray. Amen. There are several comparisons. Between our body. And the original temple of God. It is that common ground I would like to address today. My brothers and sisters, the earthly temple was a place entirely dedicated to God and his glory. Nothing that defies was allowed on the grounds. When something out of the ordinary occurred, God took immediate step to take care of the problem. We have the story of Nadab and Abihu found in Leviticus 10 verses 1 and 2. These sons of Eleazar offered strange fire before God. They offered ordinary fire and not that which God himself had kindled on the altar of burnt offering and God slew them. Be that as it may, the earthly temple was a place set 
apart for God and his glory. These earthly bodies we dwell in are also set apart for God's glory. According to our text, no member, yes you heard right, no member has the right to use his or her body for anything other than that which glorifies God. You may ask why and the answer is that we have been brought with a price. Jesus went to Calvary and paid the price for my sin and for your sins. When we came to him by faith in his shed blood, we enter into a covenant. We enter into an agreement. We enter into a contractual relationship with God. In that relationship, God has promised to love us, to keep us, to provide for us, and ultimately to take us to heaven to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him. Our promise was to turn from sin and to follow him totally. In truth, when we came to Jesus for salvation, we gave up all claims to our body and what we desire to do with it. We do not belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Therefore, regardless of what we are doing, we must do all to the glory of God. The temple was a place where men gather to worship God. It was a place of devotion. They came to the temple and glorified the Lord. It was a place where songs were sung, prayers were prayed, hands were raised, praise was rendered, and God was magnified. The temple, my brothers and sisters, was a place of worship. Just as the temple was devoted to God as a place of worship, these bodies are to be places where God is worship. The truth is, these body will render worship to one God or another. When we look at the Corinthian believers, with their mouths, they acknowledge Jesus Christ and then with their bodies they participated in the worship of Diana. The question may rise, how can I worship God with my body? The answers are many, but I would like to suggest a few today. One, present your body as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, We must covenant with God that you will use your body for nothing that dishonors and degrade his name. Number two, we can prostrate our bodies in prayer. Take your body aside from the world and go to the Lord in prayer on a regular basis. Nothing glorifies God quite like individuals who trust him enough to call on him in faith. Third, practice God's presence. Never forget that Jesus is ever with you. Learn to walk in the knowledge of his abiding presence. If you will stop to consider that Jesus is there with you and that he is watching, it may prevent you from engaging in activities that will dishonor his name. Fourth, praise him continually. Determine in your heart the Bible says that Daniel determined in his heart as followers of Jesus Christ, not followers of Buddha, as followers of Jesus Christ, not followers 
of Confucius as followers of Jesus Christ, not followers of Baha'u'llah. We must determine in our hearts. What must we do? We must determine in our hearts that we will not allow any circumstances of life. Not allow COVID to stop us from worshiping God. No bomb in the road to stop you from having a thankful heart of praise before the Lord. Five. Place your body in God's hand for God's service. Tell us, Romans 6, 16, tell us that we will yield our body to one master or the other. It will either be the gods of this world or it will be the Almighty. Yield yourself to the Lord and he will use you for his glory and bless you. These other things will just leave you broken and empty. Today, can you honestly say that you are using your body as a house of worship before the Lord? My brothers and sisters, the temple was also a place where men carried out the duties they had been given by God. The, 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 the lesson this morning talked about work. Work was a sign to Adam from in the garden of Eden. Work is a sign to men to keep not only their muscles in tune, but to keep their minds focused. So the temple was also a place where men carried out the duties they had been given by God. Things such as the sacrifice, the tithe, the offering, and prayers were all carried out here at the temple. It was a place where duties were performed. These fleshly tempers are also places where we are to carry out the duty we have been given by God. We need to adopt the same mindset as the great apostle Paul. Even though God was using him to pen the scripture and to preach the gospel under a mighty manifestation of divine power, Paul still refers to himself as a servant. The word here is literally a bond slave. One who has made a conscious decision. You see, Paul determined in his mind to give the totality of himself up to Jesus and to his will. A person who relinquishes all claims to serve, all claims to gain, and all claims to glory. A person who wishes nothing more than just to be exactly what God wants him or her to be. So the question could be asked today. Is your temper a place where the duties of the Lord are carried out? There are many areas where we are duty bound before God we are duty bound in witnessing hello we are duty bound in worship we are duty bound in prayer we are duty bound in tithing we are duty bound in obedience in holiness and in righteousness and in thousands of other ways we are duty bound before God I need you to know that the old temple in Jerusalem was the scene of many deaths. Millions of animals were taken deer and slain on the altars in obedience to God's commands. While there was praise, are you hearing me? While there was singing, 
While there was worshiping going on in this great place, there was also the stench of death. Every time anyone went to the temple, they were immediately confronted with a scene of death. Like it or not, men should be confronted with the same scene when they come into contact with God's temple. You and I are challenged to be dead to certain things in this world. According to the Bible, we have been born again. As a result, we are a total new creation. Therefore, we are expected to be dead to our own way of life and to the ways of life held so dear by the system of this world. In Colossians 3, 1 through to 9, in these verses we are told to put off or consider ourselves dead to certain activities. Among them are one, fornication. Any illicit sin, premarital sex, extramarital sex, homosexuality, lesbianism, this term runs the gamut of sexual sin and is an all-inclusive. Someone need to know that the only safe sex known to God is that which occurs within the boundaries of marriage. I'm not just talking about intercourse. I am referring to any sexual expression. It is forbidden by God. That may seem repressive, but it is right. It is by the book. And if you want to dishonor and defile your temple, you will have to deal with God about it. Secondly, uncleanness. Impurity of thought or life. Third, inordinate affection. Evil desires and passion. Evil concupiscence. Which is an evil lust. For the forbidden, this is the sin that fuels Adam and Eve's fall into sin. What about covetousness? Greed, or the sin of not being satisfied with what you already have. <clears throat> then, there's a sin called lying. Yes, I said it, lying. We should always speak the truth and never try to gray it out. There is such a thing as absolute truth. What this boils down to is that we are to put these bodies to death for the glory of God. He doesn't want us killing ourselves. However, he wants us to restrain ourselves and bring our bodies under subjection. We are to control our bodies and not our bodies controlling us. In 1 Corinthians 9.27, here Paul says that he keeps under his body. That phrase means to beat it into submission. If you do not control your body and its passion, I guarantee you that your body will control you. Somebody needs to know that the temple was a place of display. When men saw the temple standing there in Jerusalem, they were reminded of God. They were glad to recall that there is a God in heaven who loves sinners and has made a way for the redemption of each and every person. These bodies are temples of the Lord, are our witness to the world that we have been redeemed. Every time the world sees a child of God, 
The world should see a manifestation of the power and the grace of Almighty God. That is why Paul refers to the Corinthian believers as his epistle. Paul is telling them that everywhere they turn. Are you hearing me? Everywhere they go. They are living, breathing love letters to humanity. Letters that says to sinners, what God has done for me, he can do it for you too. You may be the only sermon some people ever see. The only sermon some people ever listen to. That is a message that is worth repeating. You see, the temple in Jerusalem was covered over with gold. It sat on the highest hill in the city facing the east. Every morning when the sun broke over the horizon, it cast its light onto this great structure. It literally blazed in the glory of the sun. Perhaps this was the reference point for Jesus' words in Matthew 5, 14. Day or night, the temple of God was always alight with the glory of God. There is a lesson here for you and for me. We are to be such reflectors of the glory of God that men and women can see his power working in and through and within our lives. We are to be bright, shining example of his saving power. Whether you like it or not, you are a witness. Your life either speaks well of Jesus or you bring dishonor to him by the things you do and how you live. God's plan for us is summed up by Paul in Philippians 1.27. Only let your conversation be as become it the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent. I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the fate of the gospel. So my brothers and sisters, the question again today is what kind of statement are we making about Jesus? Are we reflectors of his glory? As I conclude today, yes, it is your body. But if you are committed to God, your body is still God's temple. So how are you treating the house of God? Are you totally dedicated to Jesus today? Are you using your body to worship him in true devotion? Are you fully executing your duties before the Lord. Have you put those things to death in your life that dishonor him? Is your life a pleasing display to the saving grace of God? If there are needs today, bring them to Jesus. There may be some persons listening who have not yet given their lives to Jesus. You are not God's temple as yet. But you too can be if you will repent and be baptized and live for Jesus. He will save you by his grace. Somebody needs to know today that God is still in the business of saving people. Will you give him the right way in your life? Today, it is my fear that too many persons come to church, but they do not come to Jesus. So let us, as I prepare to take my seat, let us not only come to church, 
but let us present ourselves as living sacrifices. It is my prayer today that our bodies are tempers for God's dwelling, so that when he comes, we may hear him say, well done. tested him throughout the course of time so many still reach out to him with broken hearts and minds and every one of them will say without exception that they find that Jesus never fails and he even in the days of old, he brought his people through. And then he came to show his love. He died for me and you. And then he rose again to prove that every story had been true. That Jesus. Satan. so good to know that Jesus never fails. It is so good to know that even in the days of old, he has brought his people true. And today, we too can be assured that the, the same God who delivered the children from Egyptian bondage is able and capable to deliver us from whatever circumstances we may find ourselves in. All we need to do today, wherever we are, whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, we just need to focus on the unchanging word of God and know that Jesus never fails.
Bow your heads with me as we pray. Eternal God, you promise in your words that your word would not return to you void. So we pray that as it has traveled from the north to the east, from the north to the west, to the northeast, to central, we pray that as it travel across the vast expanse of the sea, that it may find dwelling in the hearts of our brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters, and that it may bring all of us to that place where we may be changed, dear Father, from sinners to saints, so that when you burst the eastern sky, all of us along with our loved ones and with those whom our lives would have been living testimonies to may stand on the sea of glass and we may hear the commendation, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Keep us committed. Keep us strong until you return. In your name I pray.